This podcast is not currently supported or sponsored by any company. However, I would like to pay homage to all the church fellowships I've been a part of. Church of God of Prophecy, KICC, Luton Christian Fellowship, True Vine Fellowship, and New Covenant Fellowship. From little to big boy, knee high to a grasshopper, from immature child to an ever-grown man who serves a great God. Let's go! So turn around, my child, my son. Turn around, my son. Your true strength is in me, in me alone. Oh, my daughter, true beauty's within. To be found in him indeed. So look to me, I am eternal. The things they are after only fade away. So look to me, I am your father. I will provide everything you need. So look to me, I am creator. So look to me, I am here, I will never forget you, you have met with me now, my beloved, I want to let you know how much I really love you. Jesus has rescued you now You have a new label Times are refreshing I'm now Just know that I'm able 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 Mmm Just know that I'm able Just know that I'm able Mm -hmm. Just know that I'm able Just know that I'm able Just know that I'm able My child Turn around my You're looking the wrong way So turn around my child Welcome to the second episode of the Cool But Reluctant podcast hosted by your man Jay Fills where you'll hear insight into my journey as a musician, worship leader, member of several local churches at various stages, as well as guests, if we get that far, and their journeys and stories with the hope and aim to encourage and inspire all who are listening, whom perhaps maybe are at the stage where I have or guests have experienced previously. So that song that you just heard me sing and play live, um, that wasn't edited, um, It's called Song of Repentance that I wrote in 2021. And it's literally the quickest, the quickest song I have ever written in my life. I think I wrote it within a space of time span of just like two, three hours. Even like, not even, actually, you wouldn't even say that. I think I'm just counting the time where there's actually gaps to when I actually finished the lyrics. So it just randomly came to me in the shower. Um... And I had a dentist appointment and I remember these words just came to my head and I was like singing it a bit in, in the shower. I made sure I wrote it down or voice noted it, I think. And then I went to the dentist and then t- just more of it just came to me when I got back in my car. And I was like, wow. And I think at that time, I it was definitely, there's a reason why it's called Song of Repentance because I think my heart was just get it going in a certain direction that I just didn't want it to go. And 
I think I felt God was speaking that song to me and hence why it's written in the perspective of God speaking to the listener. It's God speaking to us rather than half the time our, our songs, um, worship songs are mainly um, us expressing gratitude. But I just felt in that moment in my life, that was literally God speaking to me and those lyrics came out and just it was just a basic call of repentance where you, where you just have the, yeah, he's, he's talking to everyone everyone's a child and then he's speaking specifically to the son and that lyric about strength men are more synonymous uh, um about strength and we rely on it quite a lot in different areas sometimes toxic and sometimes and sometimes in a good way um that's helpful um and then the same the same thing um about the daughter like women are beautiful and the they adorn themselves very well but sometimes as we can see in, in the world at the moment sometimes it's a bit too hyped up and sometimes we think the outward appearance is better than the inward appearance um or inward inward character i should say but yeah and then it's just like yeah just knowing in the chorus is just knowing about god as a creator as a father knowing that he is eternal <laughs> that like literally everything else will fade away and only him will re remain like i think there's a scripture that says um heaven and earth will pass away but his, um his word will never pass away and who's the word jesus christ so yeah i just wanted to give you a quick overview of that song and yeah actually the was it the end tag is about like um meeting with god because obviously when we repent then we're obviously meeting with god in that moment like properly and you're meeting like uh, having a, a, a genuine encounter and then he like gives you an identity and um a new label where where people would call you something else before but he's he's stamped his mark on you so yeah that's just yeah just really i hope you're blessed by that i don't know when i'm going to release that but it's there and you guys are the first to hear it <laughs> so yeah if you listen to my first podcast then you would know what i meant to write at the end is that this next podcast this next episode is mainly about my worship leader journey um if you haven't listened to the, the first episode i would recommend to listen to it um, you don't have to listen to it first to listen to this one, but it will give you a lot more context in terms of the journey that um, I'm taking you on because the first one was mainly about my main testimony in terms of growing up in church and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So let's get down to it. Um, I'm actually going to read that famous Romans 12 scripture, which says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to, to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And yeah, if we just go back to that first, that first bit, it's like offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is our true and proper worship that we should mainly focus on everything else comes out from that. The sacrifice, we, um, like in the new covenant, like we're more encouraged to give a sacrifice of praise. Like no matter what's going on, give a, a sacrifice of praise and, and we are made separate. Therefore we are called to live differently, which shall please God. Um, so yeah, that's where I start in terms of worship. And starting from me just like as i mentioned before i grew up i grew up um in a christian in a christian home i grew up in um going to different churches and playing in different worship bands since a young age um mainly playing drums at first and then i transitioned later on in my teens to started playing keys and stuff but predominantly my very much my younger life i was playing drums um in uh, local choirs and different different bands freelance stuff and predominantly in, in in church as well and i was mainly just a musician at, um that would just that would just play um but it wasn't until i got to ncf new covenant fellowship church um when i was about 18 years old and when we it was actually early very early on as i mentioned before in my in my other podcast it was about halfway i joined into the church being planted um so they were planted in luton in 2011 october october 20 uh, 2011 and i didn't join the church until about june july 2012 so it was very early um i i was almost one of the ogs you could say 
Um, and then, obviously, people. Um, I spoke to people. People caught on that. Obviously, I was a musician, etc. And then there was one um, meeting that we had when, because because a lot of us actually recently joined. Um, and then we we're trying to form the worship team. And my friend Noel, very good friend. He's one. Of, he was he was one of my groomsmen at my wedding. Shout out to Noel Manura and Gabo. <laughs> um, he was the worship team leader at the time, and I think he had a, a meeting with everyone. Everyone wanted, um, just wrote down what he exactly wanted to do in the team. And I just wrote down, I would just want to uh, play keys or um, play. Well, we didn't have a drum kit at the time because it was a very small building. So it was like djembe and like percussion instruments, etc. And And he said, oh, you don't want to worship me? I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm not a singer. And it was funny because you could like, the world was very, is very good. I wouldn't say was, is very good at spotting those things in people. And I was adamant. Like, I was literally adamant that I, that I'm not going to sing because I, I never really classed myself as a singer. I didn't have confidence in my own voice and stuff like that. So I was very much like in the background. And also at that time, when I first joined NCF, I was actually playing keys for another church. So what would happen is that church would finish at about half 12. I would shoot off probably just before. And there was another church that was about 10, 15 minute walk away. So I'd walk to that church and because there would be an afternoon church that starts at about half one, etc. And I would play keys and they would pay me. And literally the first weekend, um, they had a conference. So I played on a Saturday um, and a Sunday and they had this prophet um, guy from Germany. His name was Timo. I don't know where he is now. I haven't really looked him up or anything i should do that actually but anyway yeah, his name was timo and he there was a point in the conference where he called people up and he was like prophesying over people and he actually spoke to me and said um there will be a change in the way that i worship and i was like okay i never really thought anything thing of that and at the time as well like i'm young i'm 18 like you hear you hear about prophecies and stuff like that and I don't know about you, I don't, like if, if you guys have been sceptical in the past about people prophesying over certain things, because sometimes sometimes things can seem very carnal in the way people are just prophesying, like especially when they go on about like marriage and having babies and stuff like that. Like I, I always remember that scripture about testing the spirits. And um, so that would always be in the back of my mind, kind of um, being a bit sceptical. But anyway, I, I remembered it. And then to be fair, throughout that, probably throughout the next eight nine months there was actually a gradual change in the way that I would express how I worship and it started in my bedroom and it was in the secret place that's why that's what people call the secret place so I think at the time like like uh Beth Bethel was very hot um coming into the forefront and the, they were releasing a lot more music and then at church we were singing a lot more Bethel and kind of the the new Hillsong United stuff at that time like in the early 2010s and then um yeah I just remember there was one stage that there was a song that was that was being played I was playing it in on YouTube and I just stood on my bed and like my arms just reached out stretched out wide and I just felt such an utter freedom in in just singing the song and I've never done that before in my life like it can be very reserved um, etc but like at church and stuff like that um but that moment I, I just felt there was a, a like a a switch there was definitely a switch in that moment that probably came about seven months after that prophecy and I didn't even think about that prophecy at the time like you don't think about that stuff until you you look you look back and you're like wow that actually was what was um said um that's well, yeah what what was said happened so it was amazing <laughs> yeah it was amazing and I remember like being a young person as well like um we can um, I'm saying we like going back in time now um get ahead of ourselves sometimes like we get excited and we think we're just gonna run the world now <laughs> and then that's just such a young mentality which is a great mentality to have because then you, you 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 have that fearlessness or uh more cu- like you have more courage to just like go to people and ask certain things and then I remember um I don't know why I did this but I was like because I, I felt pumped and I felt that switch straight away I went to one of the uh, the girls 
um, in the worship team. And I, for some reason, like, this is me at the time not really understanding structure and, like, authority hierarchy and stuff like that. And um, I just said to her, because I knew, I think she was worshipping, sorry, she was she was leading worship on that Sunday. And I just messaged her. I was like, oh, if you need anyone to, to help sing with you, blah, blah, blah. But she, um, or if you needed me to do it. I don't know why I said that. As if, like, everything's just going to change. Everyone's going to drop their things because oh, I've changed. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, I can't. I think she actually ignored. I think she actually ignored my message and just sent out in the group basically the songs that she's doing for Sunday. But anyway, but that's just. Um, it was just quite funny. But then I did at some point express that to Noel, and he's like, "Okay, cool." So then gradually I started just leading one song in the like in the middle or towards the end of someone who um, else's set, whoever was leading, like playing keys and um, just just singing part of a song or whatever, just to gain that um guess that confidence i guess as well and then to fast forward to the end of 2012 um i was getting more confident and then the was like do you want to lead worship on your own like next year and, and then literally the first sunday of the new year oh my gosh no let's go back again <laughs> let's rewind again <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Because there's so much stuff that happens in your life. Even though I've structured out this episode, it's quite funny that you just end up missing a missing a chunk or just getting a few things mixed up. So the st- the main story is actually correct, but I think just the the certain times that I got mixed up. So it was throughout 2013 I had that change, and then at the end of tw- 2013 I was asked to lead worship at the beginning of 2014. So it was the the first Sunday of 2014 um, of the new year. I led worship. Um, my dad obviously at the time throughout the throughout 2013 saw that I started playing a bit more guitar, and then he bought me. I think it was for Christmas. Um, my uh, my first acoustic guitar. It was just I can't even remember. I think it was the chord. Yeah, I think chord. It was the the make. Um, but it was, it was a very nice looking guitar, but it didn't sound like how it looked. But at the time, I wasn't to to know. I was just enjoying playing the guitar. Um, so yeah, the first Sunday that I led worship on my own um i think it went well my obviously i was still at the same time i was i wasn't confident in my own voice i would like i didn't like how my voice sounded um even though other people would still encourage me i was like no i like your voice but i knew i sounded nasal and obviously i've never had any training or anything to like vocal training or whatever but it was quite great it was just a great feeling at the end you know what i realized like i got off i got off the front of the church went to the back and then i realized my hand was full of blood <laughs> so i think because i was i wasn't using a, a guitar pick so i was literally using my, my fingers to strum and like my hand was just full of blood and then i looked in my guitar and it's just like splats of blood inside and i was like oh my gosh like i obviously had to clean up my hand but then you know in that moment for some reason i had a a deep conviction that that was like a, a covenant that God was making with me in terms of me being a worship leader. And I've, and that's always been like one of the most significant moments in my life, as well as giving my life to Christ in terms of like a milestone. Um, so from that point, I knew God wanted to use me um, in that way. And then I started like obviously doing a bit more and then What's good about New Covenant Fellowship as well, when I first joined, uh, my pastors were, are Brazilian and they they came over to Brazil um, probably about, I can't remember, probably about 10, 10 years before, just like 10 or 12 years be- before they, they started, they planted the church. And they first came to, to Harpenden and they're um, around what, uh, Youth with a Mission, otherwise known as YWAM. And a lot of missionaries were coming to the church at the time. I I didn't know who what who, who missionaries were. I had no idea. I wasn't really that clued up in terms of like the Christian world and stuff like that. I'll just go, before I'll just go to church, do my thing, yeah, just hang out with people um, from church, etc. I didn't really have a wider perspective of what's actually going on in the world um, with Christians. But they, well, why I've definitely opened up my eyes. It was great being connected because I met so many people, especially from different countries. It just really broadened my my mindset. Um, and and really ignited like a desire for me to actually just love people more and just learn different languages. I think it's fun. I don't. Ha- I don't. I'm not fluent in any language, but I like to learn 
um, different phrases just to make people feel welcome and, and loved in it. Um, but yeah, it was great. And um, they what they started to do, um, I think it was once, it was either every Friday or at the end of um, the month, the last Friday of, um, of every month, they started doing these unveiled worships sessions where you could sign up whether you're whether you're um part of the base or not um didn't really matter um and yeah there was a girl that I was I was friends with at the time and she encouraged me she was the one that head, headed it up and she encouraged me she was like oh why don't you do that and I was like oh, okay cool so what happened there is that that doing that you would ha- I think it was like from eight o'clock to midnight it would just be non-stop non-stop worship and people could come and go people could just sit there either sing along with you or just sit there and just engage read their bible draw or whatever and um each hour there'll be basically be four slots and you had um four different people um what like singing playing playing music um dur- during that hour and to be fair an hour's a long time you know but and especially for me who hadn't been leading worship that long um and usually like on a sunday morning service it's just um it's just probably about 20 20 minutes half an hour max in it some churches go 45 it just depends what church you're at but um yeah so doing an hour that really it was good for me because it really challenged me and it also helped me grow in confidence confidence in in my own voice and and turn and just trying to figure out how it sounds better the way I can project project it better also being sensitive growing and being sensitive at as to what is going on right now in that moment and try, and just trying to hear and be led by the holy spirit um whether because sometimes you don't always just have to sing it's, especially the the perk with um an advantage I have is that I'm 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 good at piano so I don't necessarily have to just come on and just start singing songs I could literally play the piano and just create that atmosphere that needs to be there and then i would be um led to just then join um in a song and then just transition to different songs and i had the freedom to do whatever i wanted it was it was great it was awesome and that really helped me a lot it was uh, like i cannot like thank why i'm a lot like like they've been a major part of my my journey growing up as as a christian from literally being from 18 to when i left luton um earlier this year in 2023 it was just like amazing even to the point where i was i'm now actually part of a, a band based um from ywam or founded from ywam called chapel co and we've recorded we've had a couple of recording sessions so if you want to check out chapel co go on youtube um we released um an album last year and we released an album the year before um like an ep album um i can't even remember what it's called you know that's really bad but check out Cap- chapel co <laughs> Oh my gosh. And if you want to sponsor or or be a supporter of any of those missionaries, because some of some of them get to a point where they need they need to raise money to get a visa to be able to stay here and continue doing doing the work that they, they feel and um they're led to do by God. Um so yeah, very much like why why wham youth permission doesn't have to be why wham happen, even though they're the ones I'm more uh, ha- I have more of a connection with um but yeah like look up these organizations if you feel led to support people and be generous go ahead and do it um so yeah yeah unveiled worship really helped me a lot and it and just the confidence and i started to actually like the sound of my own voice this is what's really good as well there's two there's two two lessons um that i learned that i that i hope that you guys could learn as well is also just learning to actually love what you have as well is is really important to to have that confidence because if you have that confidence um to do to to have that because i didn't believe that for quite a while in terms of liking my own voice other people could say it to me but if i didn't believe it myself then i was always going to be stuck in a certain place but then the more the more freedom i i felt i had to express myself in that way my i it's, it's amazing what confidence can do and can and help you sound a lot better and the second thing is if if you like going back to what i said before in terms of i had no intention of singing and and leading worship i was just happy being a, a musician accompanying people and 
those things changes. If God wants to make a mark in your life to do something, he's, he's going to do it. And it's good to surrender to that. <laughs> like we could be hard, we could be hard, stiff neck people, man. It's not, it wasn't just the, the Israelites in the wilderness throughout many generations following. Like we, we are, our humans are synonymous with just being stiff neck, man. <laughs> but it's, we just got to come to God and to surrender, surrender that, surrender that because what he has for us is so much better. I mean, oh my gosh, it's so much better um than what we think in ourselves we're fallible people how can we trust in our own selves when we're fallible it makes no sense like there's a scripture that says um, i think it's in jeremiah it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it i the lord search the heart i test the mind even to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his doings so like our heart is very like deceitful just don't trust don't trust in your heart like the things of the world saying um follow your heart it sounds nice and it's and it's it, it makes sense to the way that they want to live their lives but if you want to live according to to god's will we do not follow our heart we fo we follow the leader of the holy spirit man. <laughs> so yeah that'll be my word to you today but yeah um yeah so actually yeah so uh, what i said there about ywam was definitely kind of like a non-sponsor sponsor, sponsor. <laughs> so if, if i'm not like i'm not sponsored by anyone but i could probably do like in each episode like a non-sponsor sponsor where i'm just letting you know about all these different organizations or people to connect with therefore like if you don't if you want to do something about it you can <laughs> so yeah it was, it was amazing so that was just really great and following that in 2014 um as I mentioned before, like New Covenant Fellowship, Brazilian pastors, a lot, very, very multicultural church. So we had like, at one point, we probably had about 20 different nations and our church is, was very small considering it, it had about 50, 60 people max. So to have 20 different nations is quite remarkable within, within that small um, number of people. And obviously I was gr I was growing in my, my relationship um, with God and, and stuff like that and our head pastor from brazil um they they have a, a guy who's one of their worship leaders and he let um he basically does like a, a two-week conference each year um a school called a scholar abba pie um which basically means school of the father and it was like a like a kind of worship school like growing growing with god etc and two like two two years before like um the year before one of my my friends at the um one of my friends chooks he went to it before so he went to brazil for about a month and a bit um there was a, a girl named lelato she was the first one that i knew that she did it before and what was amazing is that obviously traveling from england to brazil is not cheap so and it's obviously you had to pay for the the school as well but um there was a few times throughout the year that the past pastor nanato that's his name from brazil he he was like if you want to if you want to do it he like fed it, if if i felt that i would i really wanted to go he would pay for the school or the church over there would would pay for the school um pay for me um on on my behalf on their behalf i can't make really you speak today but anyway um and i all i would need to just pay the ticket so what i did I was I was actually gigging at an Italian restaurant at the time, and what I would do from from the money I would get from that, I would save the money, and then yeah, just let that be a pot. Actually, to be fair, I think my parents actually helped me pay for the ticket, and then I just made sure I saved up for other spending money because I was gonna be there for a month, so I had to make sure I had enough money. And at the time, um, the conversion rate was really good. Obviously, it's good for us, but it's really bad for Brazil. If you if you think about that, like, <laughs> like I think my one pound was like, like four, like four or five re um, reais. So I was like, not balling, but I had a lot to, I had a bit of money to to spend from the money that I saved up. It wasn't a lot. It was probably about just two hundred fifty quid or whatever. But um, but compared to that, it was near. It was about nine hundred reais. So um, that was really cool. And then, yeah, I was blessed to, to stay with, there was one week I stayed with a family. Um, they had a son who spoke English. Um, and then another week I stayed with another pastor and his family. And then and then I went to the school, which was about 13 days, about 12 days on at this compound. And it was amazing. 
Like it was amazing. Like obviously I was the only English person. Um and it was amazing like amazing. It helped me number one, like you're in the deep end. Like I had to make sure I wrote down like these certain phrases that I had to remember in Portuguese. That because there was literally no service out there. So I would be stuck in communicating with people. There was a few people who had who could speak English. Um and I had a translator dur- so during like their um preachers different preachers that would come i would have a headset and then one of the one of the women who spoke american english she would um translate translate and it would come through to me in the headset that was really cool yeah shout out to sarah <laughs> and then there was also a, another girl i befriended her name was brenda she spoke good very good american english as well and yeah and i made a lot of friends that were that didn't speak english and yeah because this is great man just <laughs> Like it's just chilling out in Brazil was amazing. But anyway, coming back to the story, like that that was really um key for me as well in terms of my worship leader journey in, ter- in terms of growing closer to God, experiencing him in the, in a different country and pe- um people expressing different ways and just having that experience itself, just being in a completely different country. Like I wasn't in Rio, I was in the northeast of Brazil, so it wasn't flamboyant it was like i compared it when i came back it was kind of like a brazilian looted town in a sense but i love the people like the people were great there wasn't much like touristy things around even though obviously when you're there you don't you don't know anything so everything seems really cool and yeah stuff like that so that was that was amazing and then obviously came back from there and then yeah it was just a it was just a really awesome time and i'm just very very thankful and grateful for those those moments that I had and then to fast forward I was a youth leader at the church for a time and then I stepped down because I wanted to focus more on my music um and then during the pandemic so I'm really fast forwarding now during the pandemic I was asked to transition into being the worship leader I was music director for a bit at the time um but then during the pandemic obviously we had to sort out how to do like the 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 music online and stuff and stream it so because obviously being a producer um obviously you have the the software and i know how everything goes i just needed i just need to communicate to people okay you do this you do that but then um nanzip who was the worship leader at the time um he he asked me if i wanted to do it i said i said i'll probably go away and think about it and i said i said i feel like no but to be fair it's because there there is a part in me that just doesn't want to lead. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. Like even when you go away and seek God, there is a part of you. If you're not surrendering everything to Him in prayer, then we are like going back to the the scripture. Our heart is going to deceive ourselves, and we're going to just we think that oh, what we're feeling that moment is 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 God saying no. However, that I can admit you need we really need to admit and really learn to be honest with ourselves otherwise we are gonna de- um, deceive ourselves and probably not be going in the direction and our, our life might be at a standstill or be stagnant because we'll be like well, how do I get to this point and then you realize actually my heart is a lot harder than I than I think um, but anyway I knew deep down I really just couldn't I couldn't be bothered to to be a leader and lead people because I just wanted to get on and do my own thing However, that is very selfish. <laughs> and and I said to Nanda, Nanda's not going to push me. So he said, okay. So obviously he's speaking to the pastor and then and then Pastor Eva like then speaks to me. She can be very persuasive. <laughs> she can be very persuasive, but at the same time, I was I was my ears were open to realize, do you know what? In this moment, this is the need that we we have in the team and I I can do this and it's just whether I want to surrender to that and to say yes and allow God to use me in that so that was a very tricky well I wouldn't say it was tricky to be fair because it was just a, it was just a, a seamless transition because I was doing the stuff anyway it was just that I had more responsibility with people and made sure that I kept the team united during that pandemic um as well as like doing the po- like lead and worship in the back studio that my dad built and then doing the post-production of that, sending that to my friend Saula, who would do, who would sync it to the video and make sure it's, everything got streamed correctly. And then um, I think Saulo and Pedro would do, yeah, do the streaming online. But um, yeah, so I was, I was worship team leader from, yeah, probably from the middle of 2020 during, during the pandemic. And 
yeah, what I, the main thing I was actually trying to do at that time is like, we didn't, obviously we didn't really need to focus on the music side. So I just wanted to ma maintain cohesion in the team. However, what's funny is that both times that I've, I've been asked to, to lead, I had a, I had a word from God. And when I was a youth, when I was, I was transitioned to be a youth leader, um, things were going awry. There was a lot of young people leaving for various reasons. And it was basically bare minimum. So it was just me and my friend Hannah who, um, most most weeks. And we had a couple of boys, but they 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 would come some weeks, they wouldn't come some weeks. And we were just like every Friday we'd have a we'd have a youth group, but obviously there's hardly anyone there. So most of the time we would just like go down to the um to the prayer meeting downstairs. And obviously we're pr we're all praying, just trying to figure out what to do. But then I remember it was probably about a month in and even with, when no one would come to the youth group, so I'll just be there by myself and I'll just sing praise worship songs. And I heard a, wor a word from God and he said, F come September, there will be a change. And I think that actually, no, to be fair, that there was actually before, um, no, 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 sorry. Yeah, come, come September, there'll be a change. So there was probably about three months um, where it was kind of a bit barren. And come September, then actually a couple more people, um, Nanza and Becky joined, um, and they were willing to host youth group at their house. And then a couple more other people started joining, and then that's where I actually met like my, like my best friend. Well, I didn't meet him there, but like my best friend Alex started joining at that time as well. So then, that that's like that was amazing just to hear that, and it actually came to fruition. Fast forward, worship team leader. Now, um, I was praying to God. I just don't know what. Like, I wasn't sure what to do or, well, not sure. I just come into him, seeking his face, basically. And then in a similar way, he said the same thing to me. He said in a year's time, the team will look different. And not long after that, someone someone stepped down from being in the worship team um, and just felt like they, they, just, they didn't want to focus on that anymore. And then there was another person that left and then there was another person that just... Um, transitioned out of the worship team so things started happening very quickly and the team did look different in a year but it's it's amazing like when god calls you he's not gonna leave you dry man he is not gonna leave you dry <laughs> and haggard like he will if you're seeking him in the right way with heart surrendered and with adoration he will speak and we just have to to listen and surrender to that because we're not there's no we can't do it in vain um so yeah so yeah that's what so yeah i was worship team leader for a bit until basically i stopped being worship team leader to the point where obviously i started um i was engaged and then i then i had to move had to i decided to <laughs> i decided to move that move out of luton from where i've been living throughout my whole life born and bred luton i moved down to the south of england where i was close to my now wife um at the beginning of 2023 and literally like stop like stop being worship leader and then obviously i joined i joined the church that she's serving at um they obviously like throughout the year before like i obviously met people visit as, as i visited the church when when i'd hang out with her and visit her and people started to get to know me and obviously they no like know me as a musician they would admit to me that they've looked me up on on spotify or instagram and, and saw that obviously i was a a musician of good caliber so, but obviously they weren't, they weren't going to pressure me to, to start playing. Cause obviously I wasn't even a member of the church either. And obviously they have certain, um, ways of going about things. So they just have random people just join. But anyway, um, what happened? So from January, I was obviously going to the church regularly every Sunday. And it wasn't until obviously j after I got married. So it was like June, June was the, June this year was the first time I, played at that church and I played drums and so that was a good six month period where I hadn't led worship there were, yeah there was a good six month period I hadn't led worship I was in the congregation and for me that was very that's very different some it can be quite uncomfortable because sometimes as if like musicians or worship leaders can relate like if you're not up there it can feel very strange um, because you're just used to serving in that way. And then you're not a spectator when you're in the congregation, but you're just um, participating in a different way where you're just being led rather than being part of a team that's actually doing the 
the facilitating and leading, etc. Um, but I felt those six months were really good for me because it helped me not to rely um, on that and just be just be open and just also me being aware of how I am in the congregation. Like sometimes you can look around and to see people are really free, like hands lifted high, hands all over the place. Like, and I know it's like, even me, I don't necessarily like to do that anyway. Like, I don't feel like I have to have my arms completely extended out wide unless I feel, unless I just feel that way. Um, but I was, but I would have my hands or my arms in a certain position or whatever. And my eyes are closed. I'm always, fo- I'm always just trying to focus anyway, if I know the songs, my eyes are closed. <laughs> Cause yeah, this church, Grace Church, there are a lot of songs that I, I hadn't really known before. Um, but yeah. And actually to come back, actually to, to rewind as well. Like there was a moment when I was like probably about 2014, 2015, when I'm leading worship, like I mentioned before I was playing, playing guitar and leading worship. And as I was growing with God, I kind of had a, like a, a, a conviction or feeling that I should probably do one or two weeks where I don't lead with an instrument. And I felt that was very freeing as well, because then I'm not hiding behind the instrument. And I think it was really, it was really good and helpful. And it just helped me to be more expressive at the front, because obviously if you're standing over instrument, you're just standing there on the spot. Whereas when you don't have instrument, you can move about a bit more freely. You can kneel if you want to feel like you want to kneel in that moment. Obviously if you're near a fold back, (laughs) um, don't do that because it will feed back. (laughs) But um, but yeah, the reason why I thought of that is because I was mentioned about like just being aware of how my heart is whilst I'm doing certain things. So in that moment, I was leading worship. And then even since then, I haven't really um, not led without an instrument, but I needed those moments at that time to kind of prove to myself and show that I'm not hiding behind that and... I felt like my heart was really open at that time to just to just really do that and be and grow confident in doing that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Now when I lead worship, I'm always leading with an instrument, but not because I'm hiding behind it. Because obviously I need to in that moment and just help help if I'm if I'm directing the team as well. It's just easier to do that. But but yeah. So coming coming back to yeah being at um, this current church, Grace Church. It's yeah. It's 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 been really. I'll say sometimes challenging because you're just used to being at the front and especially doing it for six months, not, not playing an instrument at all. Um, sometimes you can, you can kind of grieve a bit. Like there's that sense of grieving as well, because you're just so used to that, but you know, that was a certain season that God wanted to just help you just rest and just rejuvenate because especially when you're just constant, there's a lot of people that are probably listening right now that, that know that feeling of you're just constantly on the go and you're doing various different things. And it's good to just be still and just sit there. Sometimes people do it just for maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but for me to do it for six months, is, it was mad. It was almost like a sabbatical basically. Um, that I had to do but I think it was really beneficial um and it rejuvenated me because then it gave me the excitement again to to serve again in that way um and yeah just yeah it was just great the love of that was just really awesome you know so I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna end it there gonna end it there I hope you guys took stuff from what I've just said and it was, um, I probably went on a lot longer than I intended, actually. I thought this particular episode would be fairly short. But then as you're speaking, even though I structured stuff out, like you realise like there's a lot of stuff that probably goes on in your life. Obviously, I'm talking about my life, but like speaking to you guys now, it's probably a lot of stuff that you realise, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff that happened within a period. And once you, when you step back and just reflect on that, you're like, wow, God is so good, you know? So yeah, I just... Hope you guys were encouraged by this episode and peace out.